Welcome back to Mass Effect 2. JC here. It's Codex time. And I will say right here and now, the coughing in the background, yeah. Sorry, I, I, we're still on the mission. We're still in Morden's clinic. <clears throat> and uh, I tried to move to a quiet spot, but um, the coughing was still there. So I adjusted all the volumes. The coughing's still there. It seems to be hard baked in, so... I can't actually do anything about it. But what we got is we've got some entries in here. <clears throat> they are primary ones, so I will let Mr. Uh, Mr. Announcer go. Do his relatively quiet talking. Although they resemble a mammal reptile cross, the Vorcha have no terrestrial analog. They are humanoid in form. But Vorcha have clusters of non-differentiated neoblast cells, like those of Earth's planarian worms. Damaged Vorcha cells mature into specialized structures to alleviate injury or stress. Transformations include thicker skin following injury, lung adaptation for barely breathable atmospheres, and stronger cardioskeletal muscle under high gravity. Skull capacity and brain size do not change. Vorcha rarely make more than one somatic overhaul. Vorcha assault each other frequently, causing their young to gain strength, intelligence, and resilience. As a result, Vorcha see inflicting and receiving pain as normal communication. Few Vorcha study professions, in part because their average life expectancy is only 20 years. Because Vorcha can eat and breathe nearly anything, they can live almost anywhere but racism prevents them from integrating into most societies that dismiss them as vermin. They have few employment options beyond Krogan mercenary bands. Freedom's progress. Originally an asteroid rich in element zero, Omega was briefly mined by the Protheans, who eventually abandoned it due to its thick impenetrable crust. Thousands of years later, nature did what even the Protheans could not. A collision with another asteroid broke Omega in half, exposing its trove of element zero for easy mining. A rush ensued as corporations and private individuals tried to strike it rich on Omega, and thieves and outlaws followed in their wake. As space became tight, construction of processing facilities extended vertically from the asteroid creating Omega's jellyfish-like silhouette. To prevent future collisions, the station is ringed with enormous mass effect field generators that redirect incoming debris. Today, Omega is a major hub of narcotics, weapons, and ESO trafficking, without even a pretense of civilian government or military control. Only mercenary groups have been able to instill a limited order. The most ruthless is an Asari syndicate run by the notorious Arya Talok. The systems, al the systems Alliance UT-47 drop shuttle landing craft holds 12 soldiers in a cramped, uncomfortable cargo bay and two more in the cockpit. Officially named the Kodiak, the drop shuttle is better known to Alliance Marines as the Combat Cockroach due to its appearance and durability. The vehicle's robust environmental sealant technology exposes few vulnerable parts to the elements. First tested in the sulfuric acid clouds and extreme temperatures of Venus, the Kodiak can land in hard vacuum, high pressure, and temperatures from near absolute zero to over 900 degrees Celsius. A true contragravitic vehicle, the Kodiak's substantial element zero core allows flight by entirely countering the vehicle's mass. Its small thrusters are for directional control only. So if the mass effect field fails, the vehicle becomes a proverbial three million credit coffin. The unarmed shuttle forgoes weaponry space for active masking, electronic countermeasures, and a robust kinetic barrier system, ideal for dropping troops undetected. Well, there you go. Oh, right, now we've got some, uh, 
I've got some talky bits I've got to do. <coughs> there we go. Applications. Or next. This is just wrong, but hey. Launched in 2167, Fornax magazine describes itself as the galaxy's finest yeah, bird. No. Uh, by its fifth year, Fornax became the first human magazine to offer full five sensory stimulation. Yuck. And a previously unaffordable magazine technology made profitable by the economy of scale. Uh, with a monthly publishing run of 127 million available in both available in both hard copy and direct download. So didn't need to be our second in there. Uh, Fornax offers a range of alien models with particular emphasis on the unisexual Asari. Yeah, of course it does. Although both genders of Quarian, Drell, Batarian, and Volus are regularly depicted. Speciality editions such as Zai, Elko, and Kroganism's service. Uh, devo service devoted but smaller markets. I think somebody, whenever someone wrote this, this whole thing, I think they needed to have a, like a hose down afterwards because they probably felt dirty. Mass accelerators. Right. Ships and vehicles, weapons, mass accelerators. Mass accelerators propel solid metal slugs via electromagnetic acceleration and repulsion. A slug lightened by a mass effect field can be accelerated to extremely high speeds. Uh, <clears throat> permitting previously unattainable projectile velocities. Obviously, once it's shot out the barrel, the mass effect field goes away and it goes back to its normal mass traveling at its stupid speeds, which makes them nigh on lethal. The primary detriment of a mass accelerator's destructive power is length. The longer the barrel, the longer the slug can be accelerated, the higher the slug's final velocity. And therefore, uh, the greater its kinetic impact. Slugs are designed to squash or shatter on impact, increasing the energy they transfer to its target. Without colla uh, collapsibility, slugs would punch through their target while inflicting only minimal damage. Rather than being mounted on the exterior, starship guns are housed inside the hull and visible only as gun portholes from outside. Ship's main gun is a large spinal mounted weapon running 90% of the hull's length. While possessing destructive power equal to that of tactical nuclear weapons, main guns are difficult to aim because the ship must be able to point their bows almost directly at their target. Main guns are best used for long range bombardment fire. Approximately 40% uh, of the hull's width broadside guns inflict less damage and can be mounted with greater numbers 
and more flexibility. The modern human Kilimanjaro class dreadnoughts mount three decks with 26 broadside accelerators apiece for a total salvo weight of 78 slugs per side. Firing once every two seconds, that's an awful lot of DACA, orcs would be proud. And then say you have to mount more. However, mass accelerators produce recoil equal to their impact energy. While the mass effect fields suspend the rounds, mitigate the recoil, the recoil shock can still rattle crews and damage systems. Right. Oh, the veteran. Side secrets. Minute Zora. It's to do with um, his loyalty mission because Zaid is a DLC companion or party member. Ring firearms and antihistamines is what veteran guides say about this lush garden world. First colonized in 2160, Zaria's temperate and tropical zones are overrun with plants and fungi of all kinds. As a result, the air is mostly habitable. The air in most habitable areas is choked with pollen and spores that range from benign to deadly. Lovely place. Uh, the scattered colonies across the planet have resorted to cutting cut clearing and, sla uh, and slash and burn farming to create habitable zones. Now the most rural areas where the spores are thickest are populated only by vulture which we already know are pretty much immune to it. Lax ecological laws allow mining and manufacturing industries to flourish and pollute cheaply as the planet's, planet's carrying capacity far outstrips the current size of its colony. Alright. Zaria is also home to the Blue Suns Mercenary Company who dominate the colony's security forces. The Suns enjoy nearly unlimited influence with local politicians and judges ensuring no other private military contractors can compete with them economically. Yeah. Nearly every colony has a Suns recruiting station if not a training camp. Though this is hardly made planet any safer piracy drugs and vice drugs and vice and political violence are commonplace generally what it's referred to as a rather nice place in air quotes and a nice healthy dose of sarcasm and there we go we are done with this. Right, we're done with this codex entry. So, on that note, thank you for watching. And until next time, this is JC. Out. <laughs>